各位观众，大家好，欢迎大家收看本期的节目。今天呢，我们要讲的是第四章。第四章要讲的是正文的段落，就是 body paragraph。今天很高兴邀请到 Taylor 老师。Hi, my name is Taylor, and I am joined by our two students. 然后我们的邀请到的呢是 Tiffany 同学。Hi, my name is Tiffany. 很高兴来到这边。然后 Laura 同学。Hi, and my name is Laura. In the last chapter, we delved into the inner workings of an introduction paragraph. 上一章呢，我们讨论到的是如何写引言的段落。These included learning about a clear and concise thesis statement, writing a hook, and providing any needed background information. 这个呢，我们就提到了如何写一个清楚的主题句，以及如何吸引人的谢字，并且呢，提供读者所需要的背景资讯。After completing the chapter, you should have taken your topic sentence from the writing activity and chapter two, and expanded it into its own introduction paragraph. 所以呢，学完了上一章之后呢，同学们应该已经知道如何把你的主题句扩张成一个引言的段落。In this chapter, we will move on to the next section, which is writing body paragraphs. 那这一章呢，我们就要学到如何的写正文的这个段落，叫做 body paragraph. We will continue to look at the same writing model. 那接下来我们要看的这个呢 ，writing model 就是我们之前看过的同样的这篇范例。那我们这篇范例呢，主要讲的呢是两个内文的段落。第一个段落讲的是线上购物会使消费者呢把钱掏出去。那由提供免费运费这样的服务呢，让你掏出更多的钱去消费。举例而言，有些人可能不想要花一百块钱在运费上面。有些人呢，如果只是买一个一百块的东西，那却要花一个一百块钱的运费的话，他们就觉得这样太不值得了。那他们可能会因此而买了更多的东西，因为折扣的优惠呢，会使消费者掏更多的钱去买东西。比如说，一个消费者呢，只需要一件 T 恤。但是呢，如果他买了两件的话，他会得到折扣，那他就会为了这个折扣去买两件 T 恤。We will focus on the first and second body paragraphs today. Additionally, we will review topic sentences and how we use them to stay on topic. 那今天呢，我们讨论的重点呢，就会聚集在如何的写正文的第一段以及第二段。此外呢，我们又会学习会如何的重新审视我们的主题句，并且呢，学习如何的聚焦在主题上。We will discuss the role of concluding sentences in a body paragraph. And how we can seamlessly transition between body paragraphs to produce a coherent essay. 那我们接下来呢，就会讨论在正文的段落里面如何的写这个结论句，以及我们会学习要怎么样的把这些正文的段落连接在一起。Let's get started, shall we? 让我们开始吧。Just as we mentioned in previous chapters, the body paragraphs of an essay are used to explore your thesis in more detail. 就像我们说到的，一个文章它的正文段落呢，通常呢是用来更加的详细说明我们的主旨的。This is where you provide the evidence with any supporting facts, examples, or details to prove your thesis correct. 你可以使用事实，就是 facts， 或是用 examples， 就是例子，或者是 details， 就是一些细节，来证明你的主旨是正确的。The structure of a body paragraph. Resembles the paragraph structure you learned in the first course. 内文段落它的结构呢，就像我们一般段落的结构是一样的。Each body paragraph should begin with a topic sentence that includes the topic and the controlling idea. 我们的每一个段落里面呢，就要有个主题句。这个主题句里面呢，就要有主题加上控制句。主题就是我们的 topic， 控制句就是我们的 controlling idea。This is followed by a number of support sentences relating back to your topic sentence. 然后呢，这个呢，就事实上呢，就是我们的主题句之后呢，就会加上我们的支持句。支持句是写在主题句的后面。You should include any facts, statistics, or examples to back up any supporting sentences. 那这个支持句里面应该写的就是一些事实啦，或是统计数字啦，或是一些例子来支持你的这些支持句。Last. Your paragraph might end with a concluding sentence that restates the topic sentence. 然后最后呢，你就可以写一个结论。那结论句呢，就是要重述你的主题句，就是 restate， 就是重述
Um, I, I have a question. You mentioned earlier that essays can have any numbers of paragraphs, but how do we decide how many body paragraphs we should include? 所以，我有个问题，就是说，你之前有说到一篇论文可能可以有各种不同数目的段落，但我们要如何决定我们一篇论文可以有多少内文段落？ Uh, that depends largely on how many different ideas are expressed in your thesis. 那就决定于呢，你想要表达的这个主题呢是有多少的概念。Say, for example, your thesis mentions three negative consequences of cheating in school. Because of the three consequences mentioned, you will need three separate body paragraphs. 举例而言呢，假如你的这个主题里面提到的是学校作弊呢，有三个负面的结果。那因为呢，你已经提到三个负面的结果，所以呢，就要有三个不同的内文段落来写这三个负面的结果。You will want to discuss each consequence individually in its own body paragraph. With an introduction and a conclusion, your essay would therefore be comprised of five paragraphs in total. 那每一个负面的结果呢，它需要一个独立的内文段落来讨论，再加上结论的段落，那我们总共呢？还有引言的段落，那这样算一算，有引言段落一个段落，然后三个负面的结果是三个段落，然后再加上结论这个段落，那我们加起来数一数，总共有五个段落。Now, if your essay is a compare and contrast, or is comparing and contrasting two products, you might decide to dedicate one paragraph to discussing the product similarities and a second body paragraph for the areas where they are different. 那假如呢，你这个文章呢，它是要比较两种不同的产品，那你可能会用一个段落来讨论这两种产品的相似的地方，那用另一个段落呢来讨论这两种产品它们不同的地方。In this case, your essay would have a total of four paragraphs. 那这样我们再来数数看呢、哦，我们第一个段落是引言段落，然后用两个段落来讨论，然后最后一个结论的段落，那所以我们就会有四个段落。So, how do we decide which order we should organize the body paragraphs into? 就是我们该用什么的方法来排序这些段落呢？ Uh, there are a couple of ways to figure out which order to discuss the thesis, but the main thing is to organize your paragraphs based on the order they are mentioned in the thesis. 那我们要在安排这个段落的顺序啊，它有各种的不同的方式。那主要呢是取决于这个主题句中提到的这个概念是用怎么样的顺序来决定的。Let's take the writing model as an example.、Uh, the thesis statement is: Most people tend to spend more money online due to the shipping costs and discount promotions. 那我们现在来看看我们这个范例。我们在这个范例里面，它的主题句呢，就是大部分人呢，因为为了要节省运费，或者是为了会我得到我们的折扣，就花了更多的钱在线上购物上。Just like we mentioned in the previous chapters, shipping costs is mentioned first. This will make up the the writing found in body paragraph A. Discount promotions is the second idea listed, so this will be investigated in body paragraph B. 好，所以呢，我们现在就来看看，就像我们之前所提到的啦，我们的节省运费呢，在这个 A 的这个段落就会写下如何的节省运费。然后呢，接下来我们讲到的是折扣优惠，那我们在 B 这个段落就会讲到折扣优惠。Is there any way to figure out which order we should list our ideas in the thesis statement and affect the order of the body paragraphs? 我们应该要用怎么样的顺序来列出我们在主题句中的控制概念呢？呃、uh, ，Yes, there are a couple of different ways that that we can be organized in the thesis, and、uh, as you have said, affect the order of the body paragraphs. One way is to list your ideas from most important to least important. 好，这个就像我们之前所提到的，其实我们有很多方法来组织我们的概念，控制概念。那其中一个方法呢，就是我们把要讲的这个概念呢，从最重要的排到最不重要的。Some writers prefer to organize their main ideas the opposite way, going from least important to the most important. 那有些作家呢，他喜欢呢把事情呢从最不重要的先写，然后再写到最重要的。In the case of our writing model. The main idea appears to be of equal importance. At least the author doesn't make any mention of one idea 
like discount promotions, being of more importance than shipping costs. 那在我们的这个范例里面呢，这两个控制概念呢，其实呢是同样的重要的。其实作者他并没有分说哪一个是比较重要的控制概念，他并没有说，哎，你觉得折扣比较重要呢，还是免运费比较重要？他并没有说到。So in this example, uh, the ideas could have been just as easily switched around, making it most people tend to spend more money online due to discount promotions and shipping costs. 所以呢，我们在这个句子里面呢，我们其实呢，主题句呢是可以把它交换的。我们可以把它写成：大部分的人倾向于在线上购物上花更多的钱，是因为折扣优惠和免运费这两个可以交换。Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. 谢谢你。A major issue many students have is staying on topic within their body paragraphs. And by that, I mean ensuring that every sentence and piece of information is relevant to the ideas you're trying to make. 另外呢，有一个同学们常常常都会遇到的问题，就是如何让他们的内文段落中的内容能够紧扣主题，就是 staying on topic。也就是说呢，每一个句子呢，还有它的讯息，都应该跟你想要讲的概念是有关的。It's not uncommon for writers to want to include every piece of information they know about a subject, but even though the information may be true or even interesting, that doesn't mean it belongs in the body paragraph. 那作者呢，其实呢是会想要把关于这个主题的所有的资讯都放到他的文章里面。也许这些资讯呢是真实的，而且呢，说不定它也很有趣。但是呢，这并不表示我们就通通要把它写到我们的内文段落里面。In order to do this, each body paragraph needs to have a clear topic sentence with a topic and controlling idea. Without this, it's much easier to go off topic and even confuse the readers. 所以呢，为了要紧扣主题呢，每一个内文的段落必须要有一个清楚的主题句。那这个主题句里面呢，就会有一个主题，还有它的控制概念。否则呢，我们很容易写着写着就离题了，叫 off topic， 就是离题，也容易让我们的读者呢混淆。I want you to look at the example paragraph in your book about fast food. In this paper, I will discuss fast food. McDonald's has included many salads and veggie items on their menu. They are one of the most popular fast food chains on the planet. Many chains, such as Moss Burger, have begun selling Beyond Burgers, which are vegan and made of plant protein. More and more fast food places are even showing the calorie count for their items. Now, let's look at our example. 范例哦，那我们这个范例呢，讲到的是素食。麦当劳呢，在他们的菜单上呢，包含了许多像沙拉啦、蔬菜啦这样的东西。那他们呢，是世界上最受欢迎的素食连锁店之一。那 Moss Burger 已经开始销售 Beyond Burgers。那这个呢，已经叫做素食汉堡。那这个素食呢，不是那个快速的素哦，是那个吃素的人，就是不是吃荤的，是吃素的那种素食汉堡。那这种汉堡呢？它是用蛋白、用植物蛋白来做的，它并不是用肉来做的。那越来越多的素食店呢，甚至显示出他们的商品上的卡路里数。There's definitely a problem with this topic sentence. Tiffany, can you tell me what that is? 那能不能告诉我这篇文章上的主题句有什么问题呢？ Um, yeah, there is a topic which is fast food, but there is no controlling idea. 这边的主题句只有主题，可是它好像没有控制句。That's right. Saying you will discuss a topic does not count as a controlling idea.、Uh, because of this, there is no way for a reader to know what the paragraph will talk about it. 是的，没错。我们这里说我们要讨论一个主题，那但是你要讨论这个主题呢，它并不是一个控制概念，所以读者呢并没有办法从你说你要讨论这个主题这样的字句里面去了解说，哎，你这个文章到底是要说些什么。Will it discuss how delicious the food is, why a career in fast food is great, or what you shouldn't eat? We just don't know. 那我们不知道呢，读者呢到底是要讨论的是什么？这里并没有说到要讨论的是说这里的食物是不是很美味啦，或者是说是要讨论素食店里面的工作是多么的棒啦，或者是要讨论说，哎，是不是不应该吃素食店的食物啦？那等等，我们都不知道，所以我们并不了解。说，哎，请问一下，那作者啊，我们到底是要讨论素食店的什么东西呢
In addition, without the controlling ideas, it's hard to know which pieces of information in the paragraph are relevant to the point the writer is trying to make. 此外呢，因为没有控制概念，我们不知道哪些资讯呢是读者想要表达的，这个跟主旨有关的。Without a topic and controlling idea, we, as the writer, can better know which sentences to include in our body paragraph or not. 像这样，如果我们呢没有这个主题跟控制概念的话，那作为一个作者呢，我们将会不知道如何把我们需要的东西放到这个内文段落里面。All supporting sentences must relate back to both the topic and the controlling idea. If not, your body paragraph will go off topic. 所有的支持句呢，都应该跟主题还有控制概念是相关的。如果没有关联的话呢，那你的内文段落就是离题，就是 off topic。Let's look at the fast food example again with a controlling idea and determine if any sentences are off topic。那现在呢，我们再来看看，如果我们有控制个概念的话呢，那这篇文章中的哪些句子呢是离题的 ？In the last t e years, fast food has become healthier. McDonald's has included many salads and veggie items on their menus. They are one of the most popular fast food chains on the planet. Many chains, such as Moss Burger, have begun selling Beyond Burgers, which are vegan and made of plant protein. More and more fast food places are even showing the calorie count for their items. 好，那这次呢，文章的改变把它改成第一句话改了，改成在过去的十年呢，素食呢已经变得比较健康。有没有发现第一句话跟以前不一样了？ Laura, can you tell me the topic and the controlling idea of this new topic sentence? Um, sure. The topic is fast food, and the controlling idea is becoming healthier. 它的主题是素食，然后它的控制概念是变得比较健康。That's correct. Now, each support sentence needs to mention or somehow relate back to both fast food and becoming healthier. 非常的好。那现在呢，所有的支持句呢，都必须要跟这个素食，还有这个比较健康这两个东西是有关系的。Can you look at the second sentence and determine if it mentions both fast food and health in some shape or form? 那能不能看看这个第二句话，然后告诉我说，他们是不是都跟这个主题或者是跟这个健康是有关系的？ Um, well, the sentence mentioned McDonald's, which is fast food, and included many salads and veggie items, which are considered healthy by most people. So yes, it does relate to both. 他说到素食有包含很多像沙拉还有蔬菜相关的，那这些人都是大部分人会认为说比较健康的。那他真的跟我都很有关系。Because the sentence mentions both, we can say the sentence is. On topic, that is, it is relevant to the point the writer is trying to make. 那因为这个句子里面呢，它包含了两个概念，一个是素食，那一个是健康，所以呢，我们可以说这个句子它是切中主题的 on topic. Laura, how about you? Can you try and analyze the next sentence? 那 Laura， 你可不可以告诉我们下一个句子 ？Okay. Um, they mention they, meaning McDonald's, which is fast food, and then saying most popular fast food chain on the planet. But that doesn't have anything to do with health. Um, 在句子里面，他有说到他们，这里的他们应该指的是素食，而且他也有说到是在地球上最受欢迎的素食连锁店。可是这个跟健康好像没有关系。So does that make the sentence on topic or off topic? So, you think this is off topic or off topic? Hmm. That means it's off topic. We should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete it. I think it should be off topic. So we should delete 素食连锁店，但它跟我们这个主题呢，好像是没有关系的。Uh, Tiffany, look at the next sentence and determine if it's on or off topic. Ah,、uh, I see many chains such as Moss Burger, which is fast food, and selling Beyond Burgers, which are vegan and made of plant plant prote proteins. Many people consider those healthy options, so that would be health. 
The sentence is on topic. 我看到很多的连锁店，像是摩斯汉堡，这个是素食店，素食，然后是卖素食汉堡，这个是植物蛋白所组成的，所以很多人觉得这样子是比较健康的选择，所以这也应该是跟健康很有关系。那这个句子就是切中主题的。That's right. Laura, can you do the last sentence? More and more fast food places are even showing the calorie count for their items. 那 Laura， 你能不能分析最后一个句子呢？嗯、mm, ，fast food places is fast food and showing the calorie count as health, because knowing how many calories in a food can help a customers make healthier choices. 素食店的。呃，素食店是跟素食有关的，而显示卡路里也跟健康有关，所以因为卡路里能够帮助消费者知道哪一种选择是比较健康的。Absolutely, sometimes items which appear healthy, like salads, can have more calories than hamburgers. 没错，有时候有些看起来啊，它比较健康的食物，像是沙拉，大家觉得很健康，对不对？可是事实上呢，它可能比汉堡。这样的东西呢，含的卡路里还要高，因为它上面的那个沙拉是用油做的。Now we will move on to concluding sentences in our body paragraphs. 那现在呢，我们要继续讲我们的内容内文的段落，它的结论句。The concluding sentence is one aspect that is different between single paragraphs and essay body paragraphs. A single paragraph piece of writing should include a conclusion to signal the end of the piece of writing. 一个单一的段落呢，和一个文章里面的一个内文段落呢，它在写结论句的时候，其实是有一点点不同的。如果你完全只写一个段落，就你整篇文章都没有，就只有一个段落的时候，那你一定要写一个结论句来告诉读者说：“哎，我这篇文章已经结束了。”可是万一它是一个内文的一个段落呢，那就不一定了。These are not always needed in essay body paragraphs because the end of a paragraph is not the end of an essay. There's often no need to wrap up the ideas. 因为在一个内文的段落里面呐、啊，它因为它一个文章有很多个段落，所以我们这个内文的段落呢，它是不一定要有结论句的。因为在这个段落要结束的时候呢，并不是文章的结束，所以呢，我们就不用再写结论句。We will sometimes use a concluding sentence, and that depends largely on how much information is in your body paragraph. If your paragraph is quite short with a few supporting ideas. A concluding sentence won't be necessary. We will look at the situation. That if we say our content paragraph, should we write a conclusion? We will look at the length of the paragraph. If our content paragraph is very short, that means only some supporting ideas, some supporting ideas, and some supporting ideas. If we write a conclusion, we will look at the length of the paragraph. If our content paragraph is very short, that means only some supporting ideas, some supporting ideas, and some supporting ideas. It might be a good idea to have a conclusion to remind the reader of the paragraph's main ideas. 那假如呢，你这个文章是很长的，那它有很多的知识的概念呐、啊，或是例子，那你就需要一个结论句来提醒读者说，哎，我们这一段刚到底讲了什么。This ensures that the reader remembers the key points before moving on to the next paragraph. 那这样呢，可以确保我们的读者呢，在读下一段之前，可以知道你到底主要的重点是什么。If you look at body paragraph A from the writing model, you'll notice that there are two supporting ideas. In order to make the price of online shopping worth it, people will spend more money. And offers of free shipping if customers spend a certain amount of money also motivates them to buy more. 假如你看到这个段落呢，它的范例，你可以注意到它有两个支持的概念。第一个呢，是为了要让我们在线上购物很值得。第二个呢是免费的运送。那假如消费者呢，他花了一定数量的钱呢，就会得到免费运送。这个也使得他们买了更多的东西。These two are supporting sentences are expressed clearly with a few examples. It's quite easy to remember both ideas before reading the next paragraph, so a concluding sentence won't be necessary. 那这两个支持句呢，底下呢就紧接着一些例子。在读下一段之前呢，我们很容易记得这两个概念，所以呢，我们就不需要写这个结论句了。The final thing we're going to look at is how to transition between paragraphs. 那最后我们要看的是如何让让这两个段落呢能够连接在一起。Being able to transition between paragraphs allows you to connect your ideas together and show the reader how each body paragraph relates to the other. 让两个段落呢连接在一起呢，可以让读者更能够知道这两个段落之间的关系。
This will guide the reader in knowing whether the next paragraph continues the same line of thought or goes in the opposite direction. 这个呢，会让我们的读者呢知道这两个段落呢到底是连续性的呢，还是它走向不同的方向。This is done by adding transition signals referencing the previous body paragraph's topic sentence to the new topic sentence. 那我们怎么做呢？我们就是在这个两个段落之间呢加上一点讯号。那这个讯号就是我们的 signal， 它把前一个段落呢它的主题句跟新的这个段落它的主题句去连接在一起。Let's revisit the fast food topic again. If after completing our paragraph on the fast food becoming healthier, you will want to notify the reader you will continue to talk about positive aspects of fast food. 那让我们来看看素食的这一篇文章，再看一次哦。假如呢，完成了我们这个段落，你想要告诉读者呢，你将要讨论素食的优点。You could write, in addition to fast food becoming healthier, the price of food items has also decreased. 那你呢就可以写说，素食店呢变得比较健康之外，你加这个之外就是 in addition to。那你把这个之外写上去呢，就可以连接这两个句子。你加上比较健康之外呢，也能够写上素食的项目的价格也降低了。If you want to express an opposing or negative idea, you could write, on the other hand, the price of fast food items has increased. 那假如呢，你想要表达的是对于素食的缺点的话，那就是另一方面，你可以讲另一方面这几个字。那这几个字又让我们知道它是相反的，是缺点。The reader will not only understand your main points, but how each point relates to each other to prove your thesis statement. 这样的话，读者不仅会了解到我们的重点，还会知道呢，我们这这样的重点是如何的来证明我们的主旨。Uh, Tiffany, can you look at the body paragraph B from the writing model and determine if the new topic sentence continues the same idea or shows an opposing one? Tiffany, 能不能告诉我们说这个内文的段落 B 里面它的主题句跟前一个段落它是相同的概念呢，还是相反的概念 ？Um, the author wrote, in addition to spending more money to avoid shipping, because it's additional information, it continues the same ideas. 他文章里面有写到说，消费者会花更多的钱来避免免运费，这个是新增的资讯，也是持续提到前面的概念。That's right. You all also notice that the author doesn't repeat the body paragraph A's topic sentence word for word. It is restated. 那你也可以注意到，他并没有重复 A 段落里面的字句，而是把它们重新改写了。It's important to point out that additional ideas does not necessarily mean positive topics and contrasting to be negative. 那我们也可以注意到啊 ，additional ideas 不一定是正面的讯息。Both of the writing model's body paragraphs discuss negative effects of online shopping because they are both expressing the same idea, negative effects. We can say body paragraph B is an additional idea. 那这两个内文段落中呢，都讨论到了线上购物的负面的影响，因为他们都是负面的，所以他们我们说他们是 additional 的 idea。那各位同学，我们很高兴呢，我们今天呢，大家来收看我们这个节目。那我们今天我们稍微复习一下我们今天讲的，我们今天讲到的这个段落呢，就是要告诉我们说我们内文的段落该写些什么东西。希望大家学会了之后呢，能充实你的内文段落。谢谢大家。